combinations. There's just too many things. Too many What are you doing? Combinations. What? What goes with what? There's too much partner. There's too much partner. There's too many combinations. Okay, I'll leave you to There's it. Too many um, things. See too you many later. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. We're in the middle of Commander Legends spoiler season and there's a ton of cool stuff that's come out. It's like Christmas time for us Commander players. There's a ton to brew with, a ton of new cards which are a ton of fun. Today we're going to be building a Commander deck out of two new partners, Kadama of the East Tree and Alina Kessig's Trapper. When combined, I think they smush together to make a really powerful uh, combination, a really powerful pair, with some big dumb hitters and a little bit of combo potential as well. So first of all, Kadama of the East Tree is four green green for a legendary creature spirit. It is a 6-6 with reach. Whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control, if it wasn't put onto the battlefield with this ability, you may put a permanent card with equal or lesser converted mana cost from your hand onto the battlefield. We are going to be partnering that with Alina Kessig's Trapper. She is 4 and a red for a legendary creature Human Scout. She is a 4-3 with first strike. She has the ability, tap to add an amount of red equal to the greatest power among creatures you control that enter the battlefield this turn. So the plan for this deck is we're going to cheat things into play, take advantage of that with Kadama, and then make a ton of red mana with Alina to then put even more things into play. It should be a ton of fun. So let's get into the actual deck deck itself. So firstly, let's talk about the things we're going to be using to cheat stuff into play. We have some creatures that do this, starting with Yisan the Wandering Bard. Two and a green for a 2-3 legendary creature human rogue. It has the activated ability, two and a green, tap it, Put a verse counter on Yisan, the Wandering Bard. Search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost equal to the number of verse counters on Yisan. Put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. So early on in the game, this goes and fetches a mana dock, and as we add more counters, it'll get something out bigger and bigger. We're also going to be running Champion of Ronus, three and a green for a 3-3 three, three creature jackal warrior. You may exert Champion of Ronus' attacks. When you do, you may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. We have the always great Elvish Piper, three and a green for a 1-1 one, one creature elf shaman. Green and tap, you may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. We have something like Zoologist, which is a bit of a punt, but three and a green for a 1-2 druid. Three and a green tap it, reel the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, put it into play. Otherwise, put it into your graveyard. Then on the beefier side, we have Ilarg the Raised Boar. Three red red for a legendary creature boar god with trample. It, that is also a 6-6. Six, six. Whenever it attacks, you may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. Tapped and attacking. Return that creature to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. It also has the ability to keep coming back whenever it's killed or exiled by going third from the top of your library, which is cool. You also have Woodland Bellower, which is 4 green green for a 6-5 creature beast. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a non-legendary green creature card with converted mana cost 3 or less and put it onto the battlefield. So this goes and gets Yisan, along with a few other cool utility creatures which we'll get to a bit later. For some combo potential, we're going to be running Allosaurus Rider, 5 green green, which we probably won't be paying. For a creature elf warrior, you may remove 2 green cards in your hand from the game rather than pay Allosaurus Rider's mana cost. So it's Force of Will! Hooray! The power and toughness of this card is not important, it's the fact that you can cheat out into play when you have Kadama out and then put something else into play for free, which is sweet. Then because Kadama says you don't actually have to own the creature you put into play, we're going to be running Atali Primal Storm. 4 red red for legendary creature Elder Dinosaur. It is a 6-6. Six, six. When it attacks, exile the top card of each player's library. You may then cast any number of the spells from among those cards without paying their mana costs. So all these creatures help us cheat something into play, which we can abuse with Kadama, and then make a ton of red mana with Alina as well, which is awesome. We have some non-creature spells as well, which I'll go through now, as this all falls into one glorious package. So we have the Hideaway Lands, Moss Swap Bridge, and Spine Rock Knoll. We should be able to trigger these both really easily, so there's just an extra way of cheating stuff into play. For some pod style effects, we can consider running Eldritch Evolution and also Birthing Pod itself, if it's not too pricey for you. But just straight cheat stuff, there's Quicksilver Amulet. A load of the creatures we're going to be running are going to be more than four mana, so this will be really cool in the deck. Going all the way back, we also have Defense of the Heart and Pattern of Rebirth. Drinking both of these clauses shouldn't be too hard, and they both let us chew drop a load of creatures on our deck, which we can then take advantage of with our commanders. Savala Stampede is also a great one in this deck, as it's also a form of card draw, and then it also lets us cheat some stuff into play, which we can then obviously take advantage with. And then we have a card which I love, which I think is quite underplayed, is Wild Pair. It only works on creatures that you cast, not ones you cheat into play, but you're still going to be casting enough creatures to really get advantage out of this. With this, you cast Ilharg and you go get a Tali for free. That's really, really good. It's just been reprinted, so hopefully it's gone down a little bit in price, but also Sneak Attack is great in this deck. But you don't need it, it's just one card if you don't have one. And then why not, because we're going to be making a lot of mana in this deck, let's run a Genesis Wave as well. You could also consider something like Flame Shadow Conjuring, which lets you double up on all your creatures that come into play. So with these cheat cards combined with Kadama of the East Tree, the plan is to just get so much value whenever we do anything. For each big creature we put in, we're going to be getting another one in for free. So Kadama of the East Tree really lets the deck just snowball out of control really, really quickly. So we have all that stuff to cheat stuff into play. Let's go to the stuff that you're actually going to be cheating into play. Generally speaking, they all have to be big, dumb, and able to do a ton of damage. 
I generally go for stuff which will either draw us cards, ramp us further, or will come into play earlier than it's meant to, so it will help with the commander as well. So something like Ancient Stone Idol and Galt of Primal Hunger are both, in theory, a ton of mana, but in reality, you're going to be getting them out a lot earlier than you would do. Konama doesn't care how much you pay for it, it only cares about the number in the top right-hand corner. So with Ancient Stone Idol and Galter, you can basically put anything else from your hand into play. For some card draw effects, I've gone for things like Dragon Mage, Nullspine Dragon, Palaka Worm, and Sandstone Oracle. All these things will swing for a ton of damage, give us a load of value, and help refill our hand. Which is great, because it means we can then do it all over again. For some other cards that help us ramp, I've gone for Gore Claw and Savage Vent Maul. Both of these help us cost some more of our big idiots, which is what we want to be doing in this deck. So the rest of the section, I'll just fill out with some big dumb idiots that you like and that you have available to you. Personally, I love a dragon, so I've gone for things like Terror of the Peak, Ataka World Render, Balefire Dragon, and Dragon Lord Ataka. But also something like Liege of the Tangle gets out of hand really quickly. In this section, you're looking for power and toughness and some kind of cool ability. So again, whatever you have will work. So for our ramp spells, we're mainly going to be playing permanents rather than instants or sorceries. This is a bit of a flavour fail because it means we can't actually run Kadama's Reach. The reason for this is we always want to be hitting something off of Kadama's ability. Even if it's a mana dork, it's better than nothing and will still advance our board state tremendously. So that's why we're going to be running things like Arbor Elf, Birds of Paradise, Elvish Mystic, Finetorn Elves, Llanowar Elves, Wild Growth, Arcane Signet, Wood Elves. The only other cards I would consider running in this deck is Treacherous Terrain and the Great Henge. I'm a big fan of the basic land cycling cards as this fixes us early, and can also just kill our opponents out of nowhere later on in the game. In a deck where we're going to be running so many big creatures, the Great Henge is also great. It'll make our team bigger and also draw us some cards. The biggest downside with the Great Henge is that currently it's the most expensive card on the list, so if you have one, put it in. If you don't, don't worry, there's some other card draw, there's some other ways of doing cool stuff. We'll get onto that in a moment. So in a similar vein to our ramp, our card draw is also primarily on permits. There's a few not, which we'll get into as we go through, and the reasons why. But for our card draw, we're going to be running things like Beast Whisper, Guardian Project, and Soul of the Harvest. These are great, because every time we put something into play, even if we cheated it in, we will get another card, which is fantastic. Garak's Uprising gives any creature that doesn't have Trample, Trample, which is awesome, and then also draws us a card whenever we get one of our fatties into play. Domri Chaosbringer is kind of a ramp spell as well, but the minus three lets us go through our deck and put some creatures into our hand. And also giving Ilharg and Atali Haste, if we ever have to hardcast them, is never a bad thing. The last two bits of card draw I'd recommend including are Return of the Wild Speaker and Rishkar's Expertise. Return of the Wild Speaker is also a wing con because it'll buff all our evasive dragons or we can draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures we control which in this deck will be a lot which cards expertise especially draws us cards that just cheat something into play then with our commander cheat something else into play love it isn't that good synergy for removal there's plenty of stuff in our colors which will get the job done chain reaction and savage twister are decent board wipes and cinder vines and destructive revelry will help get any pesky enchantments or artifacts out of the way sticking with the permanent matter style of our deck Reclamation Sage and Acidic Slime are great utility creatures. It's not really removal, but as we're talking about creatures that do stuff when they come into play, I'd also consider running Eternal Witness in this deck, just as an extra bit of safety. So a lot of the cards we've gone over have mainly revolved around Kadama, but please don't sleep on Alina. Alina is a house. The combo potential with this card is insane. If a creature with power 4 or greater has entered the battlefield under our control this turn, we can equip Umbra Mantle or Sword of the Perunes to Alina. We can then tap her for 4 mana, then use 3 mana to untap her. We can repeat this to make infinite red mana. If we're able to give Alina haste with Swiftfoot Boots or off Domri's Riot ability, Alina can do this herself, as she also has 4 power. That's another reason why Genesis Wave is in this deck. For a backup Alina, we can also run Sylvala Heart of the Wilds. So with Alina, I'd also consider running some one-time on tap effects just to give you that really explosive turn and make a ton of red mana with her. You can run Hyrax Tower Scout and Great Oak Guardian, which will double the amount of red mana Alina is able to make a turn. And if we're running those, then we might as well run Kiki Jiki, so we have another combo win in the deck. See, with a rare and an uncommon, this deck is actually kind of powerful. As soon as people work out what this deck is trying to do, they will try and kill your stuff. So things like Lightning Greaves and Swiftfoot Boots are always a good include just to give yourself protection and give them the haste. For some tutor effects, you can consider running things like Signal of the Clans and Fierce Empath, but generally any spell that puts stuff into your hand from your deck is going to be really good, because with all the cheat effects and with Kadama, we're going to be able to get them into play pretty easily. So I think these two together are actually really, really powerful. I don't think people will see this coming. People won't expect you to put all these big creatures into play, and then also have a combo win in the deck. We can kiki-jiki them out of nowhere. This seems really, really powerful. If you're thinking of building this yourself, I would focus on the cheap package first, and then basically everything else will come together from there. You can put whatever big creatures you have. If you have the combo stuff, put it in. You don't actually need it. It's just a bit of fun, but it is, it is very powerful and was definitely something worth mentioning with this deck. And is also one of the reasons to run Alina because of that combo potential with Umbra Mantle and the other untapped style stuff. But if you have big Eldrazi, you can stick big Eldrazi in it. They will also work. 
That's why I really like the partner commanders is that they open up so many possibilities. When I saw these cards individually, I did not think, ah, GT sneak attack style deck. But it's come together and I think it's really, really cool. Thank you very much for watching everyone. Please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let me know what you think. Let me know what partner combination you're thinking of building. There's a ton coming out and there's a ton of old ones, so what are you going to make from what we have? Every day on this channel during spoiler season, we're doing a daily spoiler talk, so please check that out. And with that, I will see you all soon. Goodbye.